Symphony Podcast. And we're back with another episode of the Endless Cacophony podcast. And importantly, this time around, Chris, we are actually putting this one on YouTube, right? We're going to put this one on YouTube. We realised yeah. that there was a slight issue with putting the last one on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can find out what that issue was, but only if you watch it where it's not on YouTube. So Yeah, yeah. I you even like confused cut. me then. I don't Basically, like cable. The last Endless Cacophony podcast, we realised that we hadn't committed to our one in four on YouTube, um, and there was absolutely nothing out on YouTube, Podbean, Spotify, iTunes for a while, so we said we were going to do it, and then we let loads of secrets out mm. that we can only really tell people in Deployment Zone, a- yeah. and so we didn't put it on YouTube. So this time, we're going to not let any secrets out, Chris. Not going to let any secrets out? Nothing at all. No secrets, okay. Nothing about your surgery, no secrets, and, um, and then this one can go on YouTube, and it will go on YouTube probably... I probably put this up on the Tuesday, so like four days after it goes, or three days after it goes live on DZ. Oh, nice. So it's still kind of a little exclusive if you're a yeah, DZ yeah, member. Yeah, so deployment zone subscribers will still get the exclusive, and um, and we're still going to aim to do a weekly one on DZ. But we didn't last week, Chris, did we? No, we didn't. But it was for good reason, and that is because I had some someone come round to bring me a car. That way, that wasn't <laughs> yeah. the whole reason. But now I have a car, which means I can drive and I can start doing. Battle reports and stuff again. That yeah. wasn't driving, was it? That was something else. But, no, yeah. that was yeah. That was like you at your last sex party rather than Ooh, actually driving. Hey. But it does mean you can come down um, and we can film in person because yeah. we can have people indoors now and all kinds yep. of things. And to, to yesterday, what day are we on Thursday? Yesterday, oh, I got my no first day. COVID jab, so yeah. I'm soon to be receiving full five G. Nice. Uh, and then um, and, and then we'll be all good to and, and life is returning to normal. And I'm getting excited again about playing regular 40k and what have you which is good weird thing is though if you've had your first covid jab that means that bill gates can see through your eyes right now but he can't see through mine because you know obviously i think you can see through yours though can you (laughs) (laughs) but but no yeah um i'm excited about normality and i think that yeah i was saying i think i was saying this to winters the other day I, i was a bit not despondent, but it's hard to be passionate and, and positive about something that you're not doing frequently. And 40k, yeah. you can't play it frequently throughout the whole of the COVID pandemic. Um, we man. weren't all lucky enough to have our own support bubble salt in. So um, mm. I'm just super happy that it's it's looking like sometime this year we might get back to normal. So yes. I'm excited for you. I'm okay for you to miss an ECP to get a car if it means you can come down and visit me so we can play 40k. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Win win. Thanks, Joe. Who's Joe? Is he, is he the person who donated the car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Joe. You're a legend. Now I've got to suffer Chris in person. I'm going to turn you up a bit. Suffer Chris in person from now on. So anyway, um, on the last ECP, we did also talk about uh, the Necron list that I was building for... Was that the last one? That was the last one, wasn't it? For yeah, the it was the, yeah. Legends. Yeah, I've, it's completely changed. Yeah. Just so you know. Oh, good. We're, gonna, uh, we're not going to talk about it, though, are we? Because that would mean that we... Then yeah, we're not we're not going to tumble back down that rabbit hole because we did no, no. that episode last time, and I don't want yeah, to bore yeah. people with like seventeen Necron episodes in a row. Um, yeah. But I had my idea. I thought my idea was great. I spoke to Jim Vasil. I spoke to Stephen Box from Vanguard Tactics, yeah. and I realised that my idea was shit. So <laughs> it looks really different. Um, yeah, but they're gonna they're gonna take you down the 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 tournament rabbit hole, aren't they? The yeah. competitive rabbit hole, and then you're gonna come out of it, and you'll be like. I don't like these fluffy narrative lists anymore. I want to just punch people's dick straight off uh, it up into their bodies. <laughs> and it's like, come on, bro. <laughs> I mean, I kind of always wanted to do that anyway. Oh, I just okay. wasn't good enough. I'm just not a good enough player. <laughs> That's yeah. what it is. I'm just not good enough to do that. They're getting coached by the best now, so it's going to be... But yeah. one thing we did talk about in the last episode, uh, and one thing I've been looking at since I've been sort of digging a bit more into ninth edition rules now that I can start playing more frequently is some of the additional rules that exist. So for Necrons, for example, they have the command protocols. And the command mm-hmm. protocols ability, if you guys are unaware, basically means that you can there's a, there's a set of protocols and you can pick one for each turn and you hide it from your opponent and then when it hits your turn, you, you sort of reveal what your command protocol is and units benefit, f- benefit from it if they're within six inches of a character, but only if there's a noble model. On. It's quite complicated. Yeah, there's a bunch of quite stuff, Quite complex. Yeah. But it can give your army a bit of a bonus and a bit of a boost. And uh, we recently saw on the Warhammer community page, and I haven't read how it works, but I know it was being talked about in the, in the DZ WhatsApp chat. We recently saw the um, the, the announcement for Canticles. Yeah, Canticles have just come out, yep. 
they've got more complicated again have you read that do you understand i haven't read through them all i, I had a quick flick through and i was just i was just uh, in shock at Meta- <laughs> <Why? laughs> forge world metallica just being just blatant references to being like metallica so <laughs> just really loud and audio <laughs> boys but yeah uh, no i didn't give the rules a proper read over so i don't know how they changed from the previous canticles but i know there was something to do with previously you could you um you couldn't use the same canticle twice in a row or something um not really played much admech or played against them that much either but um it was something like that so i imagine somehow it's slightly more complicated now so but i know it applies to more things as well now as well which is cool yeah, I, I mean, it's not. We saw, we've seen some mild changes to Death Guard now have Contagion, and Contagion mm. gets more powerful uh, turn on turn. I don't think they get much more in terms of complicated rules than, than that for Contagion. Don't you um, pick uh, Contagions for. You can give Contagions to a number of different characters, different Contagions, right? So you are like adding. Sorry, you are adding uh, extra little buffs everywhere that you've got to keep track of. Or yeah, so it's, yeah, absolutely. So there are, um, you, you can, I mean, you have to pay points for that, but you can give people yeah. like extra uh, benefits that give them additional AP or, or something like that. Yeah. Um, so there's definitely a lot of extra stuff. Um, I've just pulled up the Canticles thing right now in oh, front cool. of me because I thought, well, we might as well, I've got the computer, I'm sat here. Might as well have yeah, why not? Uh, at the core, the Adeptus Mechanicus are religious warriors. Their zealotry may appear a bit different from the fanatical bellowing of the Imperial Creed we used to, but nowhere is it more evidence than the chanting of the binaric canticles. The canticles of the Honest Arm might not sound like music to flesh ears, but the warriors of the Machine God love them, and they belt them out in the midst of battle to fan the flames of their fervour. These Can chants just... grant special bonus... Go on. Uh, ju- I just want to quickly, before we get too far, you, you called it binaric, right? Binaric, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I called it binaric as well, because it's like binary, binaric. Yeah. Listen to an audio book. The dude was calling it bin Harrick. Yeah, I don't right. know what's correct now. Bin Harrick yeah. or binaric? No, binaric. It's bin- binary code, binaric. It's got to be, yeah, yeah. These chants grant special boons to any units that include the canticles on the other side ability, like servitors and text priests. You'll have to wait just a little longer to see them all, but we've chosen a few of our favourites. So Benediction of the Omnissiah. When this canticle is active, each time the unit is selected to shoot, when resolving its attacks, you can roll one hit, roll one wound, roll one damage roll. Uh, choose the Benediction of the Omnissiah in the late game to ensure those make-or-break rounds uh, of shooting go off without a hitch. If the enemy is bearing down on you, it's time to punch some faces. This thresh metal jam will get the troops pumped up. Chant of the Remorseless Fist. While this canticle is active, each time a model in the unit makes a melee attack, add one to the strength characteristics. It goes on for Invocation of Machine Vengeance. Uh, while this canticle is active, each time an advance roll or charge roll is made, roll an additional d6 and discard the lowest. And there's some other bits and pieces about doctrina, imperatives, etc. Mm. Um, it doesn't tell us at the moment about how they are implemented, so I'll be interested yeah. to know whether we have to roll for them or whether there's a... Uh, a, a sort of a, a points tally that gives you strength I, I don't know I don't know how they're yeah. going to do it it'll be interesting to know how they do it um, but like I said referring back to the Necron one they're, they're definitely adding layers in and we yes. sort of saw this start in 8th okay and we only saw this start in 8th for specifically Astartes predominantly mm-hmm. um, Adeptus Astartes in the additional benefits that chapters got on top of the normal sort of combat the, the doctrine super stuff. doctrines i think yeah. super doctrines is what yeah, yeah. a lot of people called them right yeah. and it begged a question that i thought was one we should probably attack for this episode and it the conversation did start in the dz tv whatsapp chat is the rules or are the rules for ninth edition becoming too complicated for people to be able to effectively enjoy all of the rules to That's find out stay tuned <laughs> yeah. come back next week yeah, yeah yeah um i i my position on this is going to be yes but no right <laughs> oh chris no. pollard over here yeah no it's um i don't think it is at all unless perhaps you are uh at your entry point right so i i really you know i've, I've said it a million times before i like the simple mode eighth edition simple mode when it first starts and all that stuff i like that and i also like complex uh like cool little sets of rules that can enhance the game a bit more give you a bit more tactical flexibility more stuff to think about 
okay, I'm going to forget them quite a lot of the time, or I'm going to struggle. I'm going to be sitting there going, oh man, what what was that? And and probably get them wrong sometimes, and people are going to accuse me of cheating. But uh, I, in general, I think I think this is a good direction for uh, players who are already competent with the 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 modern sort of eighth eighth and ninth edition era 40k as a thing it, i think it gives us i think it gives us a lot more but that said if i was a new player learning the game for the first time and you've got to like pick command protocols and put it in secret and then remember which one of the two that you're going to play on a turn considering that necrons came out in the starter set um, which means a lot of people are going to have them then yeah i I can imagine that it could be considered a little too complex in in that sense see uh, i'll play devil's advocate because just to go on record i like the complexity of the rules when they specifically when they match the narrative so i don't mind layers of complexity uh, in the rules as long as they are matching the narrative what I what I would have liked to have seen, and, and this is probably really difficult and really hard, so I don't know if this is actually even possible, but I would have liked to have seen uh, implementing these extra complicated rules on a codex-by-codex codex basis there to be obvious layers of the rules. So if a player wants to strip away the, the most complicated layer, or players, group of players, want to strip away the most complicated layer, they can, and they're on still on a level playing field. You couldn't, for example... You couldn't suggest to a marine player that he drops his super doctrines and a necron player he drops his um, command protocols and suggest that that's balanced. It probably isn't. Mm. Uh, and, it's, and you look at Death Guard, they've only got the contagion ability, so it doesn't really balance out. So it's hard to then balance each codex if you want to get, ready, get rid of the extra complicated rules. However, having said that, I personally am a fan of the complexity if it helps tell the narrative of that army. When it's a Death Guard and their contagion range grows uh, X number of inches depending on the turn and therefore those things within range suffer minus one toughness because they're they're basically struck by this aura and, and foul smell and um, Stank plague. booties. Yeah. Absolutely. I th- so I like that because it's narrative. However, yeah. you said something that I want to pick up Ooh, on. Ooh, okay. And this is where I wonder whether there's a line that may have been crossed. And you said that you will forget rules. So if uh, you, do yeah. you think we are in a place where certain armies, uh, Death Guard, Necrons, perhaps soon to be Admech, Space Marines, do we think that we're in a place where these armies have so many rules and so many layers of rules because you have a unit's data sheet, then you have the, which has got special rules on it, then you have the unit's um, detachment abilities and you have their chapter abilities and then you have their stratagems, um, etc., uh, do you, so if we've got that many rules that people are actually forgetting them, does that therefore mean that perhaps to some extent they're a bit pointless? Because we've gone over the line of what is easy and simple and acceptable for people to remember in terms of a rule set. So why keep adding and adding and adding? Because if they're going to be forgotten, you just might as well not put them in in the first place. Well, I'm going to make an analogy here that you're not going to understand because you don't <laughs> know anything about popular culture. Right? <laughs> That's true. It's very so, true. Every other person in the world, apart from Liam, has played uh, Street Fighter when they were a kid, right? Or if you are a kid now, you probably still played Street Fighter in some way or another. So in Street Fighter, your basic characters are Ken and Ryu, right? And they are two powerful fighters who can punch and kick, and they've got some easy combos you can do. They've got some easy special moves. They can do a fireball. They can do a dragon punch. They can do a crazy uh, kick thing, different stuff like that. Someone who's new to the game, you usually get them to play Ken or Ryu first because it's quite easy for them to sort of compete with someone who's played it for a bit longer. All right? But then also, a pro, a pro can also play those characters and sort of push them a bit further. So as much as this kind of hurts to hear because we especially kind of push the idea that when you're choosing an army, pick the models you like don't worry about the rules and this kind of stuff. I do think there's a certain element of um, there being grading of armies from people that want to pick up... I mean, you can pick up Death Guard. You can give. You can advise someone to play Death Guard as a newer player. Yeah. Knowing that they've got some powerful uh, abilities that have got less admin to keep track of. 
I think Contagion Range isn't too tricky, but it kind of teaches you the whole aura thing and how to, you know, figure out positioning for ranges and stuff like that. And then you have far more complex armies that people can play if they want that higher complexity. And I think you tend to see that there's it's balanced elsewhere, right? So uh, things like... I, I know there's, there's a bit of controversy about Dark Drukari at the moment, but they are still a Toughness 3 army, right? Yeah. And Admech, Toughness 3 army. So if you can throw loads of extra rules in it and make them play as like a finesse army, you're creating a range of accessibility. Okay, it's it's somewhat forcing players towards certain types of army, but it has always kind of been like that anyway. Warhammer in itself has never been a pick any army you want and and have an equal chance to win kind of but game. But do you know what? So that's interesting. I think... I think I agree with you to a point, but do you not think that in itself that could be perceived as a negative? So, for example, you talk about levels of complexity and the fact that Death Guard are a relatively easy entry point. I would agree that they are. Um, so, but but I I come to 40k for the first time. Right, I'm a new 40k player. I walk into Games Workshop, and I am absolutely in love with the evil Terminator-looking robots. Uh, my Games Workshop uh, shop representative comes to talk to me about said Necrons. And tells me about how they're these ancient tombs that are awakening across the galaxy, and they care for nothing but death and destruction. And I think these I, these are cool. I like these kind. I then start mm-hmm. looking at the model range, uh, and I've, I mean, I've been building Necrons for the last I don't know how long. This thing was fucking horrendous, but yeah. look at that for a model. It's I'm like, okay, so they sound cool, they look cool, the model range is glorious. Oh look, they're in all the starter sets. Yep. So now it's sort of making sense to me that I'm going to go down this route of my evil space Terminator robots that I've now learned are called Necrons. Yeah. I, and I personally believe, and I'm sure, I'm sure the community on YouTube specifically will comment below and tell me that I'm wrong, but I personally believe that Necrons are quite a complicated army to play, and I'll explain why. Yeah. You have in Necrons, you have so Space Marines, for example. What in a Space Marine list doesn't get chapter tactics? Yes. Before you go further, by the way, before you go any further, I think you should add the caveat that the most recent iteration of Necrons, so if anyone hasn't really checked out 9th edition Necrons with the new codex, they will see that Necrons have become far, far more complex than they used to be. Yeah. Anything previous, Necrons were a piss-easy army to play. They were... One yeah, thing. I enjoyed them in eighth. Um, yeah, uh, and they were almost as complicated in some aspects as they are now. But they were they were still quite easy to pick up and play. The rules were quite obvious, so I enjoyed them on eighth in the whole. Um, and I, and I looking at the rules. I've been in the codex for f- three four weeks now. I'm looking like I'm. I, I think I'm going to really enjoy them in ninth. But back to the analogy uh, yeah, and the so. story. You know, Space Marines, what doesn't get yeah. chapter tactics? Nothing. Everything, everything gets, gets it tactics. now. A tank yeah. gets a chapter tactic. You know, everything mm-hmm. gets it. You go to Necrons, what gets what gets dynastic code? Well, only mm-hmm. certain amount of units get dynastic code. What classifies... Uh, so none of your Triarch units get the dynastic yeah. code. Which is a fluff-based choice as well. Which, uh, is which the I understand crazy because it's thing. a fluff-based choice. Yeah. But it still means the player has to remember that his Triarch yeah. Praetorians don't get the dynastic code. Um, and his uh, Necron warriors do. Equally, yeah. uh, Cesares, the Silent King, he doesn't get dynastic code despite being from the Zarakan dynasty and being the king of said dynasty. He doesn't get it. <laughs> but, I mean, so, so you yeah. have to remember. You have to remember that. So that's the first piece. Then you have to remember that. Um, uh, <laughs> where was I going? Core units, okay. So Space Marines. What's mm-hmm. core in Space Marines? Almost everything's a core. Literally unit in Space everything. I was shocked. I was looking through. Like, um, I had a game with my new Blood Angels, and uh, I was looking through what's core, and I was like, hang on a minute, it's like Vanguard veterans are core, and like... I, uh, have you done the same thing with the Necron Codex? Uh, I, I I haven't, actually. I'm, I'm assuming it's really all over the place. If it's Destroyer Cult, it's not core. If it's oh. Canoptic, it's not core. If it's Triarch, it's not core. Okay. So, so core is nice warriors, is not core. immortals, yeah. death marks, lich guards. I think that's right, that's... though. They've they've cheated the so space are you telling me, player. So you're telling me that scarabs, right? Narratively speaking, scarabs <laughs> yeah, yeah. are a core unit of the Necrons. No, they should be core, but space marines have got way too much core. I'm going to just go straight out with there. Space <laughs> marines have way too much core. 
And if they've made some kind of mistake whereby they went, oh no, we want, we don't want to be able to take away uh, buffs from Vanguard vets and Blade Guard veterans and stuff. Well, don't make the rules say that it only affects core units or something. Or th- write your rules better, mate, because now yeah, everybody's I... core. And and then Liam reads his Necron Codex and he's like, well, why aren't Scarab's core? And then I have to agree with him. But why this, but this isn't. Core? I mean, I'm not trying to drag this down the Necron route. This yeah, is yeah, just yeah, a, yeah. This is yeah, my specific example about Look complexity. Look at your background. This is the, <laughs> this is the book that I'm reading, so it's relevant right now. So so now you have to know what gets your dynastic trait. And you have to be aware of what is and isn't core because certain benefits and auras only affect core units. Yeah. Okay, so that's your two things. Then you, we go on to the command protocols and you've got six that you can pick from and you have to pick five and you have to put one at each turn and then when you turn it over you have to pick which t- part of the command protocol is active. That's very complicated and as a new player you're basically predicting how the game's going to play to get the right one in the right places that's complicated like i said you've got a silent king who can't even benefit from his own benefit from his own sort of dynastic (laughs) code it just it's messy and it's really bitty and all over the place and there's some things genuinely i'm a seasoned 40k player there's some things in that codex i've gone oh i like this combination this sounds really good and then a little bit digging i I can't do it because of a little keyword somewhere Mm. in the bottom corner that isn't there that maybe should be there and again I am behind choices for narrative reasons, but Scarabs in Necrons, they should be yeah, cool. Narratively be cool, speaking, yeah. they're the first thing that appear ever in a Tomb World, is a Scarab. And, and, and yet they're not a core choice for Necrons simply because they have the Kinetic keyword. Has uh, core been de- like properly defined? Has it been, have they said core, like we, we're we assuming, prob- and very rightly assuming, that core means like a core element of that army. But does it mean something else in Games Workshop speak? Because I... If anybody out there watching or listening to this has seen a specific definition for core, let us know below. I don't think I've seen a specific worded box definition apart no. from it's the things that typically make up a force from that faction and therefore yeah. a core choice. Yeah, which you'd think, but I wonder whether the reason why scarabs aren't core is because they're kind of mindless little bug nanobot robot they're not nanobots but little bug robots and core is supposed to be like your core assets or or people that respond to orders the most or something so when i, I when i know. when i first heard about heard about core from 40k we're going to tumble down this rabbit hole this is interesting yeah when i first heard about heard about core in 40k i sort of assumed that it would be the mainstay core narratively speaking of an army so if we take marines as the example because i think as you've quite rightly pointed out Everything in Space Marine, I think even their scenery is core. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. everything's core. The dice so, are core. Uh, for me, you'd be looking at probably things like uh, I'm going to ignore Primaris for a minute because I haven't read or listened to a lot of Primaris lore. I've predominantly listened to um, uh, uh, Firstborn lore. So you're looking at for me, Devastators, Tactical Marines, Assault Marines. They're core, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't probably call Vanguard and Sterngard veterans core. They're veterans. They're not core choices that always go into battle. They're specialist troops. They are, yeah, but I mean, in, in terms of company structure, I mean, with with the Primaris as well, is that there's equivalents for everything. Um, I mean, they're just your first company boys, aren't they? So, they okay, they're not always in every battle, but if first company goes to battle, you're going to have veterans there. Um, I think they've just made core really f- like f- favor the marine structure because so many different elements of marines can can be deployed somewhere you know in in the law um i I don't i don't know we 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 need someone to come back and tell us what games not what the word core means but what games workshop have decided the word core means because that that could be entirely different and and we hopefully it's tied to the law there must be a reason why vanguard vets are core that doesn't isn't just because if they weren't buffed, no one would buy them. Because if they didn't receive buffs from from HQ units, or maybe maybe it was more like what I said earlier. Maybe core is just there to represent the people who don't um, necessarily fight as a solo uh, entity on the battlefield, and are there to be part of a core command structure. As in, they're going to take orders from lieutenants. They, uh, left tenants, I don't have my space marine book to hand, but aren't dreadnoughts core like redemptors? I don't know. I'm pretty sure redemptors are core. Should we check? Have you got it? Can you check? 
Let me check. Hang on. You go check quickly. Uh, but this is what like. I, I don't know. I, I think maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm approaching it wrong. Maybe I'm approaching it from the deployment zone narrative mindset, where I'm saying to be a core unit in terms of a keyword, you should be a mainstay, central focus of an army, and therefore that's why you are a core. Mm-hmm. A tactical marine is absolutely a core. So if you are a specialist unit, I don't know. Argument's sake, um, an eradicator. Okay, an eradicator is a specialist heavy unit, so he gets special rules as a specialist heavy unit where they can fire twice because they're a yep. specialist heavy unit. So they don't need the core ability where they gain re rolls and stuff from captains because they've already got a specialist ability because they're a specialist unit. Therefore, your core unit, i.e., your intercessors who don't have any specialist abilities, for me, they should then be benefiting from buffs from command structure because they don't have their own inbuilt special rules because they're not a specialist unit. That's how it works in my head. Mm. Uh, I'd be interested to know what other people think. You you giggled, so I'm assuming your Redemptor is a core choice. Redemptor is a core. So, <laughs> okay, so here's my definition of core. That has confirmed that for me, core, and this is why Space Marines have so much in so so many core units. Core is units that are part of a chain of command and a overall. I think core gives an army an overall sense of control and discipline. Right, so armies like space marines will have everything in core because they are disciplined and armies like necrons who are literally hard coded to do things don't have core oh, i've just ruined my own argument <laughs> I, did, I wasn't sure if you were doing it on purpose or not yeah i was doing it on purpose <laughs> um but, i don't know i think it's just space marines is good <laughs> yeah uh, that, that I, I, seems to be it I like. I would like to think that part of the reason for doing that with Space Marines is because uh, for the new players out there, having everything as core makes it super simple. I don't yeah. have to worry about what's core because it's all core. So uh, maybe maybe this leans into the Space Marines are designed for beginners because equally, you don't really get super doctrines in the Space Marine Codex unless you buy a supplement. Yeah. So it's a bolt on before you start getting into the, yeah. the more layered complex complex rules. So are we saying that Space Marines are the Ryu and Ken? Of Warhammer forty thousand. I don't know. Who, I don't know who they are. Oh, I've just, I just told you. I just told you what they are. Look, look. How have you not played Street Fighter? Who? Right. Oh, no, just. I'm not even. No, we're not going to go into this because we've already agreed in the past that we don't do this stuff because it's this constant cycle of. Oh my God, he's not seen Predator. He's not seen. Predator. I've seen Predator. I have seen Predator. What was it? Terminator. Then what haven't you seen? It's some. I haven't key... seen Terminator. Yeah, you I haven't, haven't seen, seen Terminator. Terminator. I've seen Predator. I haven't seen Terminator. Okay. Or Rocky. I watch Rocky. Oh. Jurassic or, Park? Have you seen, seen Jurassic, Jurassic Park? Park? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay. Not yeah. too bad then. So, I, I, there's a couple that I've seen Predator and Jurassic Park. Well done. But I don't, it's not, I don't tend to do. I've never seen Terminator. <laughs> never, what's the other ones that I, I get told off about? Lethal Weapon? Never seen Lethal Weapon. Okay. Die Hard? I, I like Die Hard. I okay, like good. That. So, you've seen some things. You just, I don't, some I don't things, know. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just I don't know how you avoided them. You must have had no friends. That's all I can think, is that you just got through life with no people. But surely if I had no friends, I'd be sat at home watching movies. Okay. So we're suggesting I was No, because movies movies have always been a a social activity for me. I was with people. So you all sit in silence watching a film? Yeah, because I don't like talking to people. (laughs) (laughs) It's not sociable, Christopher. That's antisocial. All right. But anyway... The point is, I think we've reached the conclusion that Space Marines are easy mode and have everything a lot easier. Not easy mode. That, yeah. was, that, that was clickbait. <laughs> space Marines. <laughs> space, yeah. No, Space Marines have got um, that element of the rules neatened up a little bit to make it easier for them. Just make a redemptor ah. call. I don't. No. I don't know if that is why it's happened. I mean, I'm just trying to apply some logic to it. So I don't know if that. I don't know if the reason why every or a lot of things in Space Marines have core and everything has chapter tactics is to make them an easier army to play. I feel yeah. like it makes sense, but I don't know if that is the reason. Um, and then I look at Necrons in comparison and think that they look stupidly complicated as a rule set compared to Space Marines. Yeah, perhaps. compared to yeah, they're not the they're they're like middle ground at the moment. Only because of the addition of some of the newer things they can do and the kind of artifacts and the Age of Sigma elements that have come in have added a lot more things you have to remember. So have you have you done much in the way of reading of, for example, the Drakari Codex? I haven't I haven't read the Drakari Codex yet. 
um, because I think between the arguments on the internet, every single word from the Drakari Codex has appeared online. So I've read loads and loads and loads of bits that have been taken probably out of context so and I pasted in arguments back and forth about why they're OP and why they're not OP. And I think we've kind of boiled it down to there being certain, um, what are they called, uh, cabals or certain, mm -hmm. they're chapter traits basically. Certain ones of those are exploitable. So and I that's where the problems are coming from. I haven't read it yet. I need to sit down and have a, a skim through it before I start yeah. playing again. Um, uh, I, I don't know when yet the Admec Codex is coming out, but I'll, when that turns up, I'll have to sit down and have a read of that. Yep. I'm interested to know, because what we've, what we've had so far is Death Guard, which, I mean, to be fair, I think I think I agree with you. I think relatively simple Yeah, I like their Codex, though. I like I it. I really like their Codex. Yeah. Um, we, we've had Necrons. We've spoke about Necrons. I think they're a bit more complicated than they have been in the past. Yeah. Um, we've had Space Marines and a plethora of Space Marine supplements. Uh, we've had Drakari. Have we had anything else? I'm struggling uh, to think if we've had anything else. I don't think we have, have we yet? No, maybe not. No, we've got... Because um, we had so many supplements. Yeah, yeah. It feels like there's been tons and, of them. And a campaign book before they've even got all the codexes out. That's yeah, one. yeah. Um, we so we've got Admech coming. Did you see the week of Warhammer Fest releases? Which I'm not talking about too much because that was a bigger disappointment than my wife's wedding night. Um, oh! At the end of that, I said my wife's wedding night, right? Not mine. Yeah, 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 she, yeah. she had, had a great time. She, I was fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so <laughs> the, at the end of that, there was a little clip which looked like to me Grey Knights and Thousand Suns. At the end of that, yeah, clip. definitely. Yeah, it was like the little teaser, wasn't it? And it had the silhouettes of. Uh... So I don't Very know nice if we're going to see ones. those next. I'll be super interested to know if Thousand Sons have a complicated codex for rules. Yeah. It would be interesting. Well, and if they're picking them together, are we going to get some kind of thing? Are we going to get some kind of box? A box set. Because that would be an interesting thing. Or or some kind of, I don't know, some some kind of special event to mark those two fighting. Two yeah. psychic heavy dudes. But, please um, bring out Primaris Grey Knights, please. <laughs> please. Never. You're not getting it, mate. Please, You're not getting it. You're never getting it. No, please. You're never getting it. I bet. I bet they won't. But yeah. how much? How much do you think? They, do you, I got excited. Then. Do you think if they released a Grey Knight Primaris kit, do you th I think they would do tons of business. Yeah, but it's lame. Come on, Grey Knights are firstborns. Yeah, don't okay. don't bother. Don't just don't bother. And they're set. They've they've just like we've we've kept them pushed into the ground. They got their little boost last year or the year before or whenever it, covid is confusing me whenever they got their <laughs> doctrines and stuff they finally people could dust them off the shelves don't give them too much because those gray knights players are gonna yeah we can't we can't get them too excited for the future that's the problem they've got to stay <laughs> but like bottom table but if the release is thousand times alongside gray knights i think that that is an opportunity for games workshop to be complicated with their rule set because it's thousand mm. cents kind they of makes definitely sense. will be yeah they've got yeah to. so i'd be I, I, like i said i need to read the drakari but mm. i'm interested to see whether we think it's complicated simply because some of the uh, the necron book as an early book is complicated or whether over the course of the releases because let's face it right we've got a lot of books to go yeah there's more factions without a codex currently than there is with a codex so it might be too early to say that the rules are too complicated in mm. ninth edition yep. But it's just something because it was brought up in the chat because Winters was talking about it. I wanted to, yeah. and, and he said, so, so Winters was saying, we'll, we'll steer off a little bit on a tangent. Winters was saying that 8th edition, just after 8th edition launch, was the golden time for 40k because everybody had a single codex and a rule set, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about post codex releases, pre Vigilus, uh, and all those supplements. Right, okay, yeah. So he thinks that was the golden age of 40k, single codex uh, and, a, and a single uh, rule book. Mm -hmm. And I would argue that to some extent, I, I agree with him. That's cool. But, but, <laughs> and this is where I'm at this, I'm really, I'm really torn, Chris. I'm really torn between for bringing in new players uh, and being accessible as an addition yeah. i think he's i can't argue with a single point he makes in that no. regard when looking at layered complexity to tell it to tell a narrative story i like that layered complexity yeah 
Do you know what I say? Do you know what I say to to new players? Go on. Fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> can't say I agree. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Fuck them. Well, you can't keep making things easier and boring so that new players don't have a hard no, time so- with it. Read the fucking book. So this Read is it. where this is where I think that there is this um, this uh, us and them kind of like standoff that occurs or exists between um, people say it needs to be simple for new players and people say it needs to be complicated to keep current or older players engaged. And I'm I what I would like to say is why can't we do both? Because listen, fuck you as well. <laughs> okay. Fuck them. Okay. When Warhammer 40,000 first became really accessible to buy, which was when they released the second edition box set with the Space Marines and the Orcs, and all us kids at the time, people who were in their 30s and, and above, all us kids at the time ran out and went, Wee, look, it's Warhammer, amazing, right? We had to read war gear books and rule books and bloody 50 books at the age of like, I don't know, 14, whatever you were at the time, and figure that shit out. And we kind of did it. We <laughs> probably played a lot well. of it wrong, yeah, but exactly. we kind of did it. And if you're telling me now it's got to be like, oh, everybody's strength four, toughness four, there's no special rules, you know, roll a dice and it's going to tell you what you have to roll. You don't, have, you don't even have to memorize the strength versus toughness or weapon skill versus weapon skill or anything all you have to do is look at the thing that says roll a four or more and you roll it if that's if if you can't take on some extra rules with that kind of core experience behind it then fuck off fuck you (laughs) no i'm joking listen no no, i'm joking Uh, i was about to say chris does not represent the views of the problems no 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 no. um (laughs) I, i think the the core rules we, we've always we've always said this, and we've said this in podcasts before as well. That it's your forty k. Um, if you need it to be simpler to get you through it early on, you and your opponent, if you're new to the game, can can choose to play it without those. You you both ditch like if you're a space marines versus necrons, space marine player ditches the um, uh, combat doctrines, and the necron player ditches his whatever they're called again. I keep forgetting protocols. Command. Um, protocols. Com- yeah, yeah. Ditches those and they play. And if it makes it imbalanced, well, that's because you're messing with the rules. But the point is you're trying to learn anyway. So who it's, cares? Yeah, you're I... trying to pick up the rules. So And you're having fun with your friend. You're not at a tournament. As a direct you can com- do that. As a but at least comparison. put stuff there, right, I- for, for us. Put something there for us. As a direct comparison, uh, Brom and I recently started to have a play around with Crusades. Uh, I think we've mentioned this before on the ECP on DZ at least anyway yeah and um, I think uh, when I first started with Crusade with him but in fact before I even started with him I read the rules for Crusade I said I I like the idea tons of rules loads of complexity I'm not sure if I'm on board with it Um, we started to play it and it was a bookkeeping nightmare Um, yeah we now have the official Crusade journals imagine if they could do it all digitally (laughs) yeah I know we now have the Crusade journals um, uh, to try and track all this stuff. And I will say that the more we played it and got used to the, the, the sort of nuances of Crusade and the additional layers of rules, I yeah. think both of us, I'm sure Brom will agree, actually genuinely really started to enjoy Crusade as a rule set and yeah. enjoy playing it. So in that regard, I, this is where I've, I've sort of fallen down the side of I'm okay with complexity if it is um, narrative-based. Uh, but specifically with Crusade, the bonus there is is it is optional rather than yeah. mandatory. And I feel like things like combat doctrines, feels like command pro- things like command protocols, things like uh, chapter tactics, things like core units, things like d- dynastic codes. I-, I feel like they're more mandatory than they are optional mm-hmm. um, in the generic in the sort of generic sense. Yeah. And I think to me that's where perhaps it falls down equally i'll go back to that point that you made really early on which i i've locked out i've locked onto that and i find that super interesting because i definitely do what you said where i, I will forget rules yeah, we've yeah. played we've played crusade games i've got to the end of the game and forgot that this character has got this battle 
like bonus that he got from the last round, and I've mm-hmm. gone, oh, I could have had, I, I don't know, for argument's sake, plus one to hit all game. Yeah. I completely forgot yeah, about oh, it. Oh shit, I would have won if I'd remembered that. Is quite often the, the thing that <laughs> comes out, isn't it? Because yeah. then I would have done that, and then you wouldn't have had that, and then I would have beaten that guy, and then I would have got those points, and I would have actually won. Yeah, quite often. Comes and in up. the end, I wouldn't have been tabled. <laughs> you would have been tabled. But yeah, 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 yeah. But but so I but so I have done that where I've forgotten the rule all the way through, and yeah. I think to myself, if I'm forgetting it. Does that mean there's too much? And I would, I would perhaps argue, yes, it probably does mean there's too much if I'm forgetting stuff. Especially if we're talking like four or five Crusade games down the line, I'm forgetting things. I've got it written down in a fucking journal next to me because mm-hmm. I need to have a journal because there's so many rules and they can't do it digitally. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm forgetting stuff that's written down in front of me after playing four or five games. Does that then mean there's too much in terms of rules? That means you're and a dumb I, dumb. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Means I'm just thick. Yeah. Now listen. Uh, I mean, it, th- this is something that can be kind of debated back and forth forever, isn't it? Because it's yeah, it's down to your tolerance. But I mean, uh, things that you invest. I think the the problem where 40k is is that it's got a large financial investment, and it becomes a lifestyle as well. And you can't go extreme one way or another without upsetting some people. So. If you make it too simple, you're going to upset a load of people. If you make it too complicated, you're going to upset a load of people. But then pe- there's always going to be a group of people that just fucking love it either way. And you've got to, I guess it's like any hobby, the more time you invest in it, the more you're going to get out of it, right? So the more time you play, the more you play, the more you immerse yourself in it, the more you watch videos, read your books, work out lists and stuff, the more rules you're going to remember. And in the end no matter how complicated it is, you're going to match that experience. So it's really whether Games Workshop want to release a game that someone can be proficient at and enjoy two games in or ten games in. And I think there's nothing wrong with either, really. Um, But my preference is is that there is enough stuff there so that you can take it further and you can take your um, kind of strategy further. These things, they don't... like. I think one of the things is is when they make these optional, well, not optional, when they make these additional rules too much of a crutch, right? So it's cool when you get a bit of extra AP here or you get an extra attack for this phase or stuff like that, something that can tilt it in your favour. It's just when, if you forget your order, if you mess up your stuff and it's like, all your guys are invincible this turn, and you mess that up, then it's got much more of a massive game impact. So I think it's just finding that happy medium, really. And, I mean, so far, they've tried to tone down the heavy use of things. Do you remember when initially Devastator Doctrine was just ridiculous? Because you could stay in it, couldn't you? And you could choose not to go on. You could just keep firing Lazcans. And they've, they've generally toned everything down a bit more. And I imagine if there's any codexes in ninth that are going to have that same kind of abuse where people are taking these additional rules and just taking them too far, they'll also be toned down as well. We'll get these like little periods of time where everyone's crying that they're OP and they're getting overused in tournaments or whatever, or people are exploiting the rules. But in the end, I think it will all come back together. And it's kind of always been like that. I do think, I do think some of the decision making doesn't make sense so uh, I t- for example i take space marines uh, as a codex what is probably one of the most popular stratagems that they have in the codex transhuman physiology yeah which is so brilliant. we then take transhuman physiology and we apply it to every deathwing unit yeah for free yeah that doesn't like that. I don't. Yeah. I just. I just will never. I mean, this isn't about complexity. Now we're coming away from complexity. Yeah. We're coming away from. You were talking about combos and rules that break the game. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, if you get them wrong, that's a real, real negative impact. So you, yeah, you're, yeah. what you're talking about is loosely, if you forget some of these complex stuff, not being severely punished for it. Yeah. Being yeah, a yeah. bit, a bit miffed, but not being like not necessarily then instantly losing the game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and things like, but but. But going back to the decision-making process, putting things like transhuman on a swathe of units in a book, and actually Dark Angels, if we do continue on the topic of complexity, Dark Angels and their super doctrine is super complex. So Mm -hmm. it's not like... 
it, the white scars were previously where you got a bonus in the assault phase or the ultramarines got a bonus in the tactical fa- tactical doctrine um in the dark angels they get a bonus in the devastator doctrine for raven wing and then a bonus in the tactical doctrine yeah, for think, green wing and then a bonus yeah. in the assault doctrine for for death wing they made that super complicated but for narrative reasons yeah are dark angels clean clearing up everybody at the moment i, I don't so, uh, <laughs> i maybe don't think, I don't think anything's that. But looking at some of the um, event results that have been sort of banded about recently, yeah, um, I'm conscious that I, I haven't delved into BCP and looked at loads and loads of data. But it looks to me, on the whole, that there's a relatively even spread of armies at the moment. Mm. I, I think um, they probably just made Deathwing good. Well, not good, but not shit. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good those, okay all right, I'll accept that. I'll accept um, that. I think the Drukhari thing, right, so feel free to comment if I've got this wrong. I think the Drukhari thing is a rules exploit, right? Um, it was something about um, a gain in damage or wound rolls or something for units um, that have got the Technomancer Dark cult Technomancy. or something. Yeah, what, whatever it is. Right, and I think what was happening is people were putting, and there, there's a exploit in the rules where you could give loads of people flamers, racks or something, and you could put them in a raider and fly them around and, and basically do like kill everybody. It's like two damage, f- auto hitting bullshit, and I think that is what's being heavily exploited for these huge win rates that we're seeing. But but Chris, um, no, yeah yeah yeah, go on. <laughs> they, g- Games Workshop have rules writers that write rules. Yeah. And people would argue they don't write them very well. Games mm-hmm. Workshop also have a swathe of playtesters mm-hmm. who playtest those rules in first draft and feedback. Yep. Games Workshop also have the ability to check that feedback and re-release the rules and have it playtested again to see if yep. it's fixed a problem. And then after that final round of feedback, Games Workshop then release the rules. So the rules get written by people who have been writing 40k rules for probably quite a long time. Mm-hmm. They get playtested and, fe- and fed back twice and then they get released. And these things still exist. Okay. But what I'm, I'm not, I'm not criticising the playtesters or the rules writers. What I'm saying yeah. is they are trying really hard to get it right. That there Ooh. is a lot of effort there to get it right, and you're never going to be able to test every scenario, every situation, no. every combination. Even if you had a playtesting army of a hundred people, and then when you release it to billions of people who play or millions of people who play, yeah. you're just never going to be able to. to to find to every cross exploit. every T, dot every yeah. I, and find every little issue and niggly issue that exists. I get that. I'm not criticising them for that at all. Mm-hmm. But some of these things that are coming out, like what mm-hmm. you've just described with Drakari, I don't understand. We, we know people like um, Steve at Vanguard Tactics is a playtester. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I know he's only been a playtester recently. We know Lawrence and the Tabletop Tactics team are playtesters. We know um, who's the guys over in the States who do the live streaming. I forget that. I've forgotten their name. Oh, yeah, the yeah. uh, Tabletop. Uh, Titans, Titans, yeah, Adrian, yeah. and uh, yeah, um, they're playtesters and very good tournament players as well. They've yeah. got some very good players playtesting this edition. I can't believe that one of those playtesters didn't turn around and go, "This is a bit." Mm, I think you should change that. Are you ready for a do 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 bang 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 do do do? Do you know what that theme tune is? That's the X Files. It was a it was a popular television program in the nineties, and it continued on into the thousands. Uh, I know you probably haven't seen it, but you know I haven't seen it. I knew the tune. Oh, you did know the tune. All right, okay. What if now? Bear with me a minute. What if they deliberately do this to a make a huge amount of purchases from the tournament scene and B, to cause huge amounts of controversy because they know they always survive these things happening. What so, if it's a deliberate thing to add huge power and make every win at all costs tournament player, aka an American, um, <laughs> go out and buy a, a Drew Curry on me? Sorry, America. Um, do you know what? That would be a better way, I think, of making money than their current model, whereby they're selling five flayed ones for £31.50. Or, when I looked at how much it would cost me to get six Death Shroud, not even to say the price. 70 English pounds. 
for six yeah. models. For six, and you can get five uh, blight lords for what, Chris. Chris, thirty-five quid. Have you seen how much one of these is? Uh, a, bil- a bajillion squillion pounds. They're quite spent. Then a hundred pounds. It's a hundred and five pounds. Oh, yep. For a, a Lord of War that doesn't even have an invulnerable safe. I know, but it's a beautiful fucking thing. Uh, it's this is never going to see the top of a competitive table, but um, it's for narrative. Right? It's, it's going to make some sick battles. Let's be honest. There's it's going to make some, some sick scenery, sick probably. Yeah. <laughs> scenery, yeah. <laughs> But like, no. see, I, I kind of like if if they were if they were if they were purposefully releasing slightly broken rules with the sole purpose of perhaps pushing people towards making a put. I'm not cynical yeah. enough to maybe to, to think they're actually doing that. But if they were doing that, mm-hmm. I would kind of argue to some extent that that's maybe a better sale model than than charging over thirty pounds for five flag ones, which is sixty five points worth a model. Yeah, well, I, I, flayed ones aren't even that that good. I can see why they do it with. Um, Death Shroud, who are absolutely yeah. phenomenal, and, and heavy that, what, in points. Yeah, and yeah, you get a, so, you get so pound some... per point is a different right. So, so yeah. not only are Space Marines a good starter army for rules, but in terms of pounds per point, if you go down the heavy intercessor, eradicator, mm-hmm. Death Shroud type route, I mean, I, I know Death Shroud of Chaos and uh, uh, Death Guard, but those kinds of like at least when you're paying thirty five pound for three Death Shroud, you're also talking one hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty points. Mm-hmm. You're talking thirty pound for five flayed ones, sixty five points. Yep, and yeah, I, they're kind of okay. It makes them less accessible, though, doesn't it? Yeah, you know that is, that's a weird one. It's a weird one. It's like uh, the witches from uh, Age of Sigma. It's a weird one. I was surprised one. that heavy intercessors were nearly forty pounds. Yeah, thirty eight pound I mean, fifty. Gravis is pretty chunky, but then the Terminators seem kind of reasonably priced in comparison and they like uh death guard terminator in fact most terminator brands uh i don't know i don't know what the price pricing model that's a different argument that's a different what's discussion. mildly hilarious is when the when the heavy intercessors came out i bought a bunch off of ebay for about 35 quid each and i got told i was silly because they wouldn't be that expensive and they've come out at 38 pound 50 yeah who's laughing now <laughs> Who's laughing now? Me and all my unbuilt heavy intercessors. Yeah, so and laughing. nobody, because everyone's <laughs> just crying. <laughs> so, let go back yeah. to the original question before we, yep. we move on to the last section of the show. Yeah. Um, do you personally think that it's too complicated, and I will refer you to your statement around forgetting rules, or are you perfectly happy with the current level of complexity in 40k? Um, I'm, I'm easy to please, and I'm also a hypocrite. Um... So I'm going to say that I'm currently happy with the complexity. Okay. And if I change my mind next time you speak to me, then you're going to have to just deal with it. So (laughs) there we go. I I agree with you on a codex by codex basis. Yep. I only have one caveat, and that is I'm I'm happy with the current level of complexity if we are ignoring campaign books like Warzone, Charadon or Charadon, whatever they call it. Yep. Um, when you start layering in war zone campaign books that have a formation for Drakari and a detachment for for Death Guard, and mm-hmm. I, I don't like that. That's not okay. necessarily a complexity thing, though. I don't. Maybe that's. Maybe, so maybe I'm wrong here. In, in terms is it of when it leaks this. into the main game that you don't like it? Like I the Vigilist stuff, like the Vigilist attachments. Yeah, it's it's almost like a gotcha moment because mm, I will have, a, have an opponent. Yeah, I have an opponent yeah. against opposite the table to me who's playing Chaos Space Marines and he's bought um, Black Legion, for example. And I'm like, okay, I know what they can do, and he goes, yeah. oh, but I've got all this extra stuff. Oh, yeah, and I've got I mean, this 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 detachment, and uh, uh, fuck off. The Chaos Worms weren't even that good. The Warp Talon um, was nice. It actually I made warp talents use... usable instead of being shit, which is I good. I used to use the forge pack or whatever it was called. Yeah, that was, the, that was the best one. Yeah, it was the it best one by far. Gave you extra movement on your um, yeah, on your mauler fiends and what. Everyone needs a couple of extra inches, um, and it gave us that. So. <laughs> and ninth just made demon engines better anyway. So cool. boom. So, yeah. so look, we've we've also got a new section on the ECP, and conscious yep. of the fact that we've got we've gone for nearly an hour, and Chris has yeah, got to yeah. shoot off somewhere. Um, 
so we've got a new section on ECP. I'm talking to you about this because this is going on in YouTube, so you guys won't be aware of this yet. But we did this for the first time last week, mm -hmm. uh, whereby Chris now has his own little thread in our DeploymentZone.tv Discord. Um, if you want to become a Discord member, you can go to the Patreon link below and sign up to Discord, uh, and you'll get access uh, dependent on your level to a, a varying number of channels. Equally, you can sign up to DeploymentZone.tv where you get tons of extra video content, and then you get access to the free areas on Discord. And I think, Chris, ECP Questions is a free area as well. I think nice. we opened it up to everybody. I think we did. If um, we have... Get on there and ask us some questions because we've got some. So, what Chris Dow blinders. does every day we film an ECP is at some point he opens it up and tells everyone, ask us some random, stupid, silly questions, and we will sit and answer a number of these questions randomly selected at random. Once we're finished, randomly selected at random. And once we're finished, yeah. once we're finished, Chris will clear the whole thread, gone, yep. and we'll reset it for the next time. Um, yeah. And it's complete pot luck if you get your question answered or not. Yeah. Um, and we're not expecting serious questions. If you want to be involved, come and join the community, like I said, Patreon or via the website, and you can jump into Discord. Um, and there's uh, 1,600 people in Discord now, there's, I think. There's so. billions. It's yeah, like it's billions been a hive world. Yeah, um, it's, it's probably one of my most favorite places to hang out in terms of 40K communities. Yeah, every type of person's there. It's amazing. Um, if, you don't, if we don't read, do your question... And you thought it was amazing, and we should do it. Just do it Tough. on the next one because I'm going to oh, delete okay. them all. Oh, okay. I'm not going to know what they were. Yeah. So just ask it the next time. Exclamation mark! Clear five hundred. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. Um, I've just I just picked one at random while we were doing that, and it's okay. just sat here on the screen. It's from Datsun Des, and it says, uh, "What is worse, getting Nurgle's blessing or having to use a portaloo at a festival? You ever been to a festival? Maybe? I can beat a portaloo at a festival. Oh, yeah." We used to have portaloos in Afghanistan that were Ooh. sat in the sun, and you Ooh, didn't yeah. want to go in that at, in the midday heat. So, would you rather be blessed by Nurgle or, or go in one of them? Is the question. Uh, well, I've been in one of them, so yeah, I feel like I have to pick the Nurgle thing just so I can experience it. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, I imagine it's quite good because I've seen some of the Nurgle characters. They've got huge. I like... think being blessed by Nurgle would be less disgusting. Than a portaloo in the midday Afghan heat. There we go. There we that's go, folks. Yeah, that's what I think. I, Pick like, Nurgle's you blessing. You couldn't sit down because it was stacked like it was stacked like a like it was like it was it was coming out like a Loch Ness monster oh. looking at you. So you couldn't sit down, but you could put your hands down because God knows what blokes were doing in there whilst they were away from their wives for six months. <laughs> so I, I'll take Nurgle's blessing, Chris. What about you? Okay. Well, if you sat down, would your uh, balls like touch the top of the, <laughs> the we get kissed, but kissed by the monster a little kiss yeah a little kiss the tip um, let's move on I think we should move on yeah. from that one sorry okay uh, I'm just scrolling around at random if it goes right at the top I'll pick the first one uh, oh that's not a thing uh, it's <laughs> Hellstorm Wargaming oh Mikey, Mikey got some so Mikey got some abuse in the questions thread today. Yeah. Uh, there was a question from someone from uh, from Dire Avenger uh, who said something like, well, the, "Can you find that question?" We need to give Mikey a, a shout out, but I need to I need to explain the epicness of the comment that brought him into the thread. Yeah, um, we probably can't read that one out because it sounded it was like a vicious retort. Actually, I think uh, rather than a question for us, uh, where is it? The, the Dire Avenger question. No, no, the, the the one I just landed on. I think it was a it was a cheeky, uh, yeah, it was a cheeky retort. Uh, <laughs> I I can't find it, mate. I'm, I'm going now. This. I'm going now. I'm going. Now. I'm I give you find another one question. while you're. Yeah, we're doing it live. We're doing it live. I'm almost there. Dire Avenger, would you rather spend a night on the Terminus Est? So it's Nurgle right again. Yep. Would you rather spend a night on the Terminus Est or watch an entire Hellstorm Wargaming <laughs> battle report without breaks? Mikey, I'm sorry. I instantly screenshotted that and dropped it in our YouTubers WhatsApp chat uh, and just said the word savage because it is it, savage. That is savage, yeah. Um, I, can, I can openly and honestly admit and say to everybody now, whilst they're watching this, that I have never been able to watch a whole Holston Butt Report without <laughs> taking breaks. Um, I just, anyway, Mikey's amazing. He's a legend. If you haven't ever seen Hellstorm Wargaming, I'll stick a link in the video description below on YouTube or in the uh, podcast notes below. Um, go over and find Hellstorm Wargaming. He kicks out tons of content he does mm. coffee times he does live streams he does battle reports he does loads and loads of stuff mikey's incredible yeah. go and support him give him a like a follow a subscribe whatever tell him we sent you um Warning, sorry though, mikey sorry he is from the north so just bear that in mind yeah yeah so if you if you are if you're like if english is your second language you might struggle with it because it so is it his yeah yeah 
<laughs> I've randomly landed on one that turns out it's a bit of a joke as well. It's Lord of Dog, 90th right. of his name. If you could pick a faction to get new plastic sculpts, which elder models would you buy? <laughs> 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 which is quality. Uh, it would dark be... Dark Reapers. The brand new plastic Dark Reapers, yeah. Yeah, Dark Reapers <laughs> for me. Dark Reapers. Right. Actually, oh, actually, no. It's a toss-up between those and, and Warp Spiders, I think. Oh, yeah. I would like to see how they redesign Warp Spiders, because they're looking pretty old. I think Warp old. Spiders could look super cool and, and menacing. So maybe yeah. Warp Spiders, actually, because the Dark Reaper models don't look too bad. So I'll, I'll change my answer to the Dog Lord. We're going to go for Warp Spiders. I actually landed uh, pretty much on a Photoshop image of quips with no hair so if i guess if you need to, if you want to see that you need to like well it's going to be gone soon because i'm going to delete yeah. all this but i'll see if i can put lim- it on the screen i'll see if i can put it on the screen right yeah, now get it's it brilliant. on the screen yeah <laughs> uh okay where in the 40k verse is swindon asks john J H N L K john L K. J- i've seen his name around you did a good job this it. it, it's jhnlk there's no vowels there's just no vowels in there. That's we're supposed to use vowels. Where would we? To... Where would we play Swindon in the forty-first millennium? Well, I mean, it's not going to be on Terra anymore. It's probably going to be Cade. It'll be Cadia. What? Because just if destroy we destroy, because if you broke it, no one would care. Like Cadia. <laughs> there you go. You heard it from. <laughs> <laughs> That's not to say that I don't love the people that live in Swindon. Yeah, it's yeah. just that Swindon's a shit some of Swindon's all right. Yeah. Some of it. Bit. From well, space. I'm, I'm not reading out Quipster's stuff. He get he gets enough airtime as it is. D- uh, to be fair, he put some funny comments in there, which isn't like him. It, I know that is weird, isn't it? I didn't think he had a sense of humour. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, it's the it's the Red Butcher. If you could only play one army for the rest of your 40k life, what would it be? Um, mm. And we can also we could just. We could also just throw in the other question because you know it's, it's it's actually pretty good. If the other half asked you how much you spend on Warhammer, what would you tell them? Um, I will. I'll answer that one. Just yeah, quickly. I think that's for you to answer. Yeah. Uh, if you make sure that you hide as much of the the lore and the look of the models as possible, um, I just say every time I've got new models, I just say it's part of my current army it was some stuff that I already had that I'm painting. Ah, so you went a different route to me. Yeah. You went different. If 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 your other half if your other half asked you how much you spent on forty K, what would you say? Get out. Leave. Yeah. That's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's how over. Dare you? It's over. I'll just yeah. take the high ground now because you're gonna say it anyway. It's yeah. over. <laughs> but we should answer the serious one above. Yeah. If you only play one army for the rest of your forty k life, what would it be? Asks the Red Butcher. That's a super hard question. That's a super hard question. We're both though. magpies. We're both super magpie guys who always change army like every five seconds. I'm literally And it's hard because also it's affected by additions. So like in seventh edition yeah. I'd have just said Eldar because I couldn't lose. Um yeah. <laughs> a little part of me would want to say Space Marines just because you know you're going to get a new model every week. So that's yeah, that's true. Yeah, a benefit <laughs> and all the rules. I'd um, probably have to go with Chaos, and I just feel disappointed a lot of the time. But at least I had under Chaos, I've got those four gods that I can turn to. Um, if we're allowed to pick like a an overall faction keyword. So I was um, going to go Chaos because it's one of my main loves in 40k lore, but because you've gone there, I'm going to stick with my current Necron project. Okay, you're going to play Necrons forever? Yeah. Okay. No, you've said it that way. You've made me feel like it's a a poor choice, (laughs) Yeah, which makes me lean into it even more. Because the Red Butcher writes afterwards that he's a genie, or she's a genie, sorry, they are a genie, and um, because it's just got a picture of a Muppet. So... uh, they're a genie and now that's going to be that's come true so that's all you can oh, play now so. I'm glad I picked it then because I Sorry. need this army for legends <laughs> one more one more let's do one more um, at least unless it's a really good one then I might be in the mood to yeah. do another one we're not going to answer this one it's another it's another joke like the other one before it's from Woodsy457 it says what Primark is best and why is it Lorgar that's controversial but we're going to skip past that one anyway yeah. uh, okay scroll I appreciate his effort anyway I'm going to Brap Brap Scallion asked, "What would you rather be, or a wasp?" Yeah, yeah, that was. <laughs> um, he asks that every time. 
Get a new joke, Brat. Just saying. Right at the start as well, Dats and Des, who we've already picked one of his at random, said, what's your favourite type of bread? Which I thought was quite a good opener as well. I've, I've picked... I've just picked three at random, and all three of them in Quipster. How much time do Quipster spend in our... Just, Should we just, answer one of give them? Him, give him some air time. Okay. If your opponent threw one of your models across the room when they lost, what would you do? And that's from Quipster. I... I if if he was the opponent and he did it, I'd yeah. I'd just retaliate with the exact same notion, knowing that it will take him about three and a half years <laughs> He'll to never paint recover. the replacement. <laughs> He'll never recover. <laughs> That's it. The rest of his life is gone now. Just trying to replace yeah. that one model, just painting that one custody <laughs> and taking seventy five Instagram photos of that same model. Yeah, I'd punch his balls back up into his body, <laughs> out his mouth, just in one go, just like one. <laughs> one uh, uppercut because I think yeah. that's funny just and they come yeah um, go on let's do another one because that one was more. a quick one, one more Chris it's not yeah. equips the question uh, oh, I, I just land on the what would you rather be or a wasp again <laughs> um, what would you rather do so let's t- take the joke away what would you rather be then would you rather be a bee or would you rather be a wasp because if you're a bee that's easy no man listen wasps are illegal and that's the end of the <laughs> Definitely. This is where I was going, right? If you're a bee, you've got a powerful stinger, but if you use it, you're dead. If you're a wasp, you can use it as many times as you want, but everyone hates you. Yeah. Everyone. Um, I'd be okay. the wasp. Gridge bog. <laughs> you're naming... <laughs> I'm only doing more questions to hear you pronounce the names, by the way. You're naming Gridge these bog. names. Yeah, Gridge bog. Um, why are plastic shurikens supposed to be as good as explosive bullets against metal armour? Um, it's because the shurikens, if they hit side on, which is when you roll a six, um, it's like mono, uh, what do they call it? Mono molecular. So they're the they're uh, right at the edge. They are like a molecule thick, so they just cut straight through it. Whereas an explosive bullet is like a a a, a blunt force, isn't it? That's my answer. Interestingly, anyway. interestingly, shuriken with the blade storm rule. Are actually better than a standard bolt gun. Mm. I like a shuriken. standard bolt gun gets zero AP. Yeah, zero I like AP. shuriken. There we Nothing. go. Nada. A Gauss flayer now has better armor penetration than a bolt gun round, and I'm saying this out loud because it makes say high Paul really, really angry. Can we do one more because I like this name? Yes. Tall, dark, ugly. Right. Oh, it's me. <laughs> My twin. <laughs> Oldie bit of goody. If you could remove one faction from the 40k universe, which which witch would you pick and why? There is two Which witch? There. Yeah. Um, I think we've probably answered this before, but we can always answer it again because uh, we're always changing our minds. Uh, you'd pick orcs, right? <sighs> Maybe. Okay. I'm currently thinking about all the factions. Yeah. I think I would possibly uh, it's a toss up uh, if if you're talking orcs like beast arises orcs then I would be happy for orcs to stay you like those, talk, don't you I, yeah. a big angry aggressive yeah, violent yeah, 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 I like mean I'm not those. against orcs my favorite sort of lore in the world is is like Tolkien's Lord of the Rings but if you're talking jokey comedy oh I think it works and off I fly and then everything explodes and uh, yeah. uh, the squig spawns got no interest for those whatsoever yeah. so if it's of Rises Orcs some of those new Orcs that they've shown us those new models they look big and angry mm, and imposing yeah, um, that's cool I'm all about those yeah. otherwise and um, I'm conscious that I am an Eldar player um, I would quite like to remove Yunari because I don't like necessarily the idea of them being in existence but okay. from 40k in terms of an actual game I'd move this is two factions strictly I'd remove Imperial Knights and Chaos Knights yeah as part of as we, yeah game mechanics you can find out we went in, in depth on that uh, a long time ago actually on mm-hmm. the YouTube channel um, I would remove Necrons because it would just be fucking hilarious <laughs> it'd just be Why so funny would you do funny. that? no I've got no uh, that was a joke I would, I'd get rid of Ultramarines <laughs> for Brom <laughs> yeah but honestly does anyone really like Ultramarines apart from nah, Brom I don't, I don't like Ultramarines if you do go do something go what, go paint a wall grey or something you boring person you <laughs> that was quite restrained Chris <laughs> yeah yeah I was actually about to say really rude stuff are we so done 
that's done. Um, I mean, I want to keep is, going because we've got your, loads of these. This is your segment, so it's entirely up to you, but I I think you were the one that was on the time frame, not me. So, you know. I do. I, I, you know what? We've got a few minutes. Let's just let's do bonus one, one. Bonus round. Actual one more. All right. A bonus round. Macca. Macca, okay. Macca Macca. says, asks, two questions, but I'm only going to ask the first part. What is the most pointless flavour of ice cream? Um, I know mine. Vanilla. No, vanilla's nice. Vanilla's vanilla's pointless. Vanilla is the ice cream that everybody puts sauce or sprinkles or flakes in, or they mix it with cookie pieces, or they mix it with chocolate chunks. So it's pointless. Because if you need all those flavour things to make it nice, it's a pointless flavour. It's a delicious base flavour, and you're adding things to it because it's quite a neutral flavour. It's not pointless. It's got a lot of points. makes it pointless. No. It's the same reason that you add juice to water, because water as a flavour is plain and pointless. (laughs) It's just fine. It does offers nothing but hydration. Just nothing. Just there's no experience to it. It's just like mm, I'm getting hydrated. Nice. Uh, uh, the most pointless flavor is pistachio. Who? Pistachio ice cream. It's just why? Why? I've turn? never had it. Yeah, good because it's shit. It's just it's a green nut. What? What's your favorite flavor of Ben and Jerry's? Oh, man, you know. I really like so I used to work in a Ben and Jerry's um I used to work at a cinema and they had a Ben and Jerry's like counter thing and you could basically if you were naughty like me you could kind of make your own ice cream out the back that's why I'm fat and um <laughs> I they had a tub of hot fudge that you could pour onto the ice cream right and you could make like a little core like the apple pie in uh, American pie and you could pour the hot fudge into it, and it, literally any flavour you want. Pick anything like fish food, uh, cookie dough, any of those with hot fudge is incredible. So that's not answered your question. No, but not that's all. what I'm going for anyway. No, you've essentially told me that to some extent you have sexual intercourse with ice cream yeah. when you were working in cinema. Who didn't? So, my favourite flavour is any... fish food. I'm just saying. Fish food's good. I, like fish uh, food. I once opened a tub of fish food. And there'd been some kind of mistake at the Ben and Jerry's factory, and there was a vein of that marshmallow sauce in it that was like it was like a river going all the way through the middle. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. It was like this lovely spunky white. You've got you've got yeah. some really interesting stories. It's Chris. gone wrong. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's all gone so. Wrong. Are we done? Is that the last question? Is it? It's, you, Is it's it, your what's, section. What's the, what's the last one? Uh, it's menial task boy. This is a serious question. Ah, oh. uh, have you ever thought about inviting members of the Discord, DZ TV subscribers as guests on this podcast? No. Do you think that we? Do you think that as human beings and as uh, and and within British law, we'd be able to get away with that? Inviting people in to join us, it w- it wouldn't work. Um, <laughs> have you ever thought about say I? I don't know how to answer this. I would love to have extra people on ECP, but I, I think I, you know, when, if and when it gets to a point where I can join Winters out of the factory full time and do this sort of thing more frequently, I think there's more scope to have guests on ECP. Um, in terms of bringing guests on from the Discord, we could maybe think about that, Chris, at some point. But I'm super nervous about putting people in situations, especially some of the questions that you and I ask, yeah, yeah. and the way we behave, who yeah. aren't perhaps versed in speaking on microphones and cameras. Um, and you'll see that we've both got a specific type of microphone. Actually, these microphones are incredibly good. They're so good that I'm already dreading editing this podcast because I've definitely mm. heard my voice through your microphone because it's yeah, picked it up off your headphones. Yeah. So, um, if you want to buy a four hundred and fifty pound microphone setup, perhaps you can come and join us on ECP. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Basically, if you've got a, a really good four K camera, if you've got a physical digital audio interface like these lovely uh, Focusrite ones that we've got, and a really beautiful um, one of these, uh, don't you? Maybe. Yeah, no, probably Conscious not. Though. as well that because we're using the the Logitech Brio webcams, it doesn't actually look as amazing as it could look because it's still strictly webcam. So I'm going to yeah, try and hook up my um, my Canon C200 with the and see yeah. if I can get it looking super sexy on the ECP. Mm. And if I can, 
I think we can do something similar for you as well. I've okay. got an idea, Chris. I've got an idea. Wow, okay. I'll talk to you about that later. Uh, anyway, yeah, we'll call that there. We'll, we'll say thank you for all the questions. Chris yep. will go in there at some point very soon and clear them all down. I'm going to clear uh, it like all I out, said, sorry. If you're not a Discord member and you want to join us, you can hit us up on either Patreon by searching DCTV or you can go over to deploymentzone.tv and subscribe to the website. And in the video descriptions, there are links to the Discord. Um, so there's ways you can come and join the community. If you do head over to deploymentzone.tv, there's tons of videos. Winters and Sultan have just finished another series, which is called Sunstrike. Um, we are closing in on the end of the first half of the Play on Tabletop campaign called Tomb World. And it's all tax fault that I'm currently completely obsessed with Necrons. Um, so you can come and check that out. Um, we've got Jim Vasil, who's in there, who's yep. a ITC winner, who's doing some content. Uh, Quips is still doing his fireside tats uh, with all of all the guests that he has. There's loads and loads of content yeah. on DCTV. And what we have just turned on recently is a seven-day free trial. So you can come on, join us, watch some content, and not have to pay a penny and decide if it's for you or not. And then you can um, obviously choose the right option, which is to subscribe yeah. and pay some money, and then you can stay a, a DCTV member. Carry now, out with us every week, you know? Yeah. Hang out with us on a Friday. Yeah, Woo. hang out with us every Friday unless every Chris Friday, decides he's got better things to do. Unless I've got something important, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that's everything. Uh, like I yep. said, if we're if you're watching this on YouTube, hit sub. If you're watching this or listening to this on iTunes or Spotify, make sure you follow us. Uh, yep. Otherwise, come check us out on DZ if you want these regularly. Thank you very much for yeah. watching and or listening, and we'll see you in the next one. But actually, that's not how these finish, is it, Chris? That was how this I. Isn't that's how, how I was, these I was naturally wrapping up a YouTube video. He's then, trying but, to wrap it up, but unfortunately. What we usually do at the end is Liam sings the exit theme. So take it away, Liam. Thank you for listening, my dears, to the Endless Cacophony Podcast. I think you were shocked, weren't you? You didn't expect me to do it then, did you? No, I didn't expect that. <laughs>